Uh, we're seeing you in hide and seek now. Was this something that Joel approached you to partake in or something that found its way to your desk somehow? Uh, yeah, I was with um, uh, ICAM <coughs> partners at the time. And uh, I think Joel was uh, possibly with them as well. And uh, so they got, they got the script to me. Um, and I was very happy to do it. I was very happy to do the, the remake of this very interesting uh, original Korean film. Um, I like the idea of going and shooting in New York. I like the idea of the character, uh, you know, uh, and I felt I was, uh, you know, it, it's the job I got, you know. It's like that, this is something that I've been explaining uh, in the interviews, uh, because, you know, uh, because I'm as old as the hills and I've been around <laughs> for so long that people kind of think that, you know, I just uh, that I that I just decide to choose these things that I do. Uh, no, I'm a, I'm a working actor and a parent. Sometimes I, you know, I just have to go to work because, you know, I've got a, a kid who wants things all the time, uh, you know, like all children do and they should. Uh, so, you know, it's kind of, so I'm, so every so often you get to do something like the 12th man, the edge of the world or hide and seek where you're both sort of, where both those things combine, where you're, uh, doing a job because you have to go to work because that's what you are. If you're going to be a responsible parent, but also you're doing something that you hope will be good as well. It's not always the case. Sometimes you're just doing something because it's because you have to go to work. So it's Vikings nice to is pretty to epic. You like. <laughs> Your Vikings was pretty epic. Yeah, 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 yeah. It's, 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 no, no, it was. It's, you know, uh, but you know what I mean. It's like it's so you try to balance both of those things together. Yes. Whereas you know you're 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 doing your fiscal responsibility and kind of getting your kicks at the same time. Well, this is a Korean remake film. How does your character fit into this twisted theater, thr this twisted thriller? Um, well, you know, he's like a, he's been given everything. It's like, a, you know, the two brothers, uh, you know, he was the one that just, you know, that stayed in school and hit the books and did everything his dad told him to do and became a reflection of his father to him. And so, you know, uh, whereas the other brother went the opposite way and rebelled against it, you know what I mean? Uh, Noah is, uh, you know, he's that that kid who grew up sort of like as this sort of like the apple of his father's eye. Uh, but in this carries an enormous amount of guilt because he's been given the entire world and his brother has been given nothing because of uh, because how his father sort of uh, conducted the will. Uh, and then he has to deal with all his father's dirty little secrets as well, you know what I mean? So this is something that, you know, uh, that's a nice part to play on, is like, how do you take on the histrionics of your father by stepping into his shoes? Essentially, you're not your father. You're going to have a completely different view of the world, a different right. perspective. And yet, sort of like, you're, you're still expected to sort of like be that, another version of that. So even at the start of the film, when he's doing an interview in the hotel, he's trying to, you know, he's like, what he's saying to the interview is like, don't shit all over me just because I'm my father's son, man. Come on, man. this is me trying to do my own thing. Um, but there's something that, yeah, I think it, guilt is a, is a huge part of this, how you, uh, like, it's, you know, it's, it's, even if you've done the right thing your whole life, that, that too can bring its guilt because, you know, you've right. done the right thing your whole, your whole life because it was comfortable for you to do so. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Because you wanted to do so. Whereas... Not because they want it's the way it is. They don't fit in. They don't conform the same way. It's not as easy for them to hit the books. It's not as easy for them to do school. Right. It's not, as, you know, it's like, par and parents then can be super tricky. 
I know, you seen the original hide and seek or did Joel kind of encourage you to watch it at all? Not until after I finished shooting. <laughs> um, or, or no, when, yeah. I, when I was finished shooting, otherwise you're, you're, yeah, I mean, there's certain things I like, the original movie has much less dialogue. It's much more of an atmospheric uh, sort of like mind trip. Right. Uh, for the American audience, we knew that we would have to put in a, a little bit more conversation, a little bit more with the family for it to breach the culture gap in the United States. Do you know what I mean? Absolutely. Uh, what, what, is, what aesthetically is going to work for a Korean audience is not going to necessarily work in the same way as <laughs> an American audience. Yeah. Uh, which I think they did a very, very good job of this. And also it helps that the producers of the original were also the producers of this. So it wasn't sort of like a, you know, a strange sort of group of people in a different company coming in to remake something. They were involved in the original. And so they were on set for the entire thing. So if we started to veer off in a direction that wasn't part of that original production or didn't stay akin to the authenticity of that film, then they were willing to sort of like step in to redirect it where they wanted it to go. Um yeah, and that made us that made Joel and I feel uh incredibly confident in what we were doing because we had people who'd been there for the original story. Well, well this that was a huge help. The story is marinated in the creeping spread of gentrification and it shows kind of the housing crisis, how it can push, you know, desperate people to do horrible things just to keep a roof over their head and it's based in new york city which i found fitting mm. <laughs> so what was your favorite part about filming on location well shooting in new york has an atmosphere that's unlike shooting in any other city in the world it just is uh well because it's it's the most city in the world for the amount of space you have um so films always feel different when they're shot in the city. They all have, they always have a different energy rather than being shot in Vancouver, Toronto with plate shots mm. pretending they're New York. It's, it's not the same feeling. You don't have the same sort of rush of energy that you do when you're uh, shooting in New York. Um, <clears throat> because then in many ways, that city becomes almost like a character within the film itself. You know what I mean? That's the, the canvas in which uh, it, it, it sits most comfortably. That's uh, like the, the two films that I've made in New York were Hide and Seek and August Rush. And you can really get the feeling of the city from both of them because they're there. They're shot there. There's, uh, it's, there's something, it's, there's, there's some, I don't know, there's, a, there's something about that city that actually transforms uh, transfers onto camera in a way that other cities don't get picked up. What was the most challenging aspect then of bringing this story to life for you? Well, I, most challenging aspect, I suppose, not and not particularly this story, the most challenging aspect for an actor on any film is that you've got to keep it there spinning like a spinning top for the entire thing. So when you when you finish your day shooting and you go home to wherever you're staying at the time, you never really leave the set and you never really arrive home. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? It's like you are in a limbo for the period of time that you're doing it. Um, and, uh, and real life is a distraction, you know? You get distracted by it. So I can understand why people, when they're doing it, will completely cut themselves off. Oh, yeah. Um, so it can be very difficult, like... Uh, to maintain friendships is very difficult when you're an actor making films because you're just not there. You can't be there for people because you're somewhere else all the time. It's mentally and geographically, you know. Uh, so, you know, you have to buy into that, I think, when, uh, when you first start, that it has a, there's a certain amount of loneliness when you do this job. So you, sometimes you're able to use that loneliness as a... a in some way as an advantage to what you were doing. So for the first half of the film, I was living in Manhattan. And uh, 
So I would go and I would shoot for the day and then I would come back and I would go into this high rise building and I would be in my room and I'd sleep. Because I don't do anything else when we're shooting. You know, I tend to not go out or go to restaurants or anything like that, unless I have my little boy and then I see you, you always wants to do something. But then for the second half of the film, where it all gets more sort of depressing, I decided to move over to Park Slope in Brooklyn to a much more downtrodden sort of like area of Brooklyn, if there is such a thing anymore. Um, and it gave a different atmosphere. Of, even when I went home, I felt that I was not quite leaving the degradation as much, you know? Uh, but it's a reality. It's a reality of, you know, how some people have to live in New York. And it's a reflection, I suppose, of the New York of the late 1970s, you know, early 80s, where East New York was just, it was people were living in abandoned buildings and running electricity from the street into the building. and. This is how people were surviving um, rather than living, you know? And, and so then it's the juxtaposition between Noah's life with his lovely wife and his two kids and his very seemingly together world. And then the world that is, uh, that is the environment that his brother lives in, that is his, it, the world of degradation is almost his inheritance. You know? Well, I enjoyed the scenes really with Suja and Kim. Was there any kind of training involved for those? For the fight scenes? Yes. Uh, no, it was, uh, you know, I mean, obviously we have a stuntman and someone, and they were wonderful, the people who were there. Uh, but because we're shooting independent films, uh, you have to move quickly, so we don't really have the days or times to sort of, you know, to be able to set up, you know, a big stuff. Choreograph at all. You know? Yeah, so, you know, you have to do things very, very quickly. So, yes, obviously we had to full choreograph it, but then I just went in and did shot it. So, you know, all of that sort of being dragged around that room and having to shoot it out of me, that's all me. Oh, my that's gosh. All that, that's all daddy. <laughs> Judge must have been uh, intense then shaking off of that after a long day filming but you said you know you go home you sleep but also at the same time you know you went to this particular area so um, those kinds of fight scenes you probably since it's an indie film you didn't really have time to shake off <laughs> an intense day of shooting. You just no. went home and relaxed. Yeah, it's like, it, you know, when you're shooting those type of, uh, these type of movies, um, yeah, that you dread that day. That's the day that you always dread on the call sheet. And then it's like, and then it finally comes and you're doing it. And then you get home that day and you're fucking so in bits. <laughs> the, it's, it's the day after doing an extensive fight scene, it's just, you're just so ginger <laughs> the next day it's like you know everything is just so stressful the lifting the lifting of a cup of tea can be hard um uh, yeah i don't know how these guys do sort of long-winded action movies for long long periods of time just exhausting it's exhausting what do you think it is about this version of hide and seek that's going to make it an intense thriller that people are going to be so captivated by? I, I don't know. I mean, it's like I can't judge how people how people are going to right. do this, whether they're going to be captivated by something or not. Um, you know, my job is to just do the best I can the day I am there. Um, I can't sort of, you know, uh, I can't prejudge how people are going to uh, to to view the film. I think it's a good film. Um, I, you know, I think everybody in it did a great job. I think Joe did a great job. Um, and uh, and hopefully the the audience will respond in kind. But you know, you never know. Have you been busy working on any other projects lately? I'm shooting at the, I'm shooting at the moment. I'm in Vancouver making a movie called Wife Like. And uh, I just came back from Europe where I shot a film called The Good Neighbor. So I, I just, this is the second film I'm shooting this year. So yeah, yeah, it's nice to have a job. You have an, in 